This is Gamer Weekly, bringing you the latest of what the video game scene has to offer. On today's episode of Gamer Weekly, I have Pat from Spryfox, and we're going to be talking about their latest game, Steambird's Alliance. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Gamer Weekly. With me today is Pat from Spryfox. Thank you so much for uh, coming on to the show. Hey, happy to be here. So right off the bat, where where did you guys get the name of Spry Fox from? Um, well, the name uh, was uh, came up before I was hired, so uh, I wasn't there for the actual naming of the company. But um, as far as I know, it's it was just like one of those brainstorming sessions where you're trying to think of something unique and pleasant sounding and, and Google unique, and uh, that's what they came up with. So. As far as I know, there's no like special meaning to it. It's just like a nice sounding name um, that you know makes for a cute logo and it's kind of memorable. So, what was the uh, the first game that you uh, that you helped develop at Spry Fox? Me personally, or the company? Uh, I guess both. So, what was the first game that you made, and then what was the first game that you made with uh, Spry Fox? Um, oh, I see. Uh, I guess the first. You know, as far as my professional career, um, the first game I worked on was Forza Motorsport 2, uh, which is a Microsoft Game Studios um, Xbox title. Um, at Sprite Fox, the first game I worked on uh, was actually never released, so, um, or it was released and then like quickly canceled. So um, there's not really much to say about that. Um, but then the, the first Sprite Fox project that actually it was like playable. Um, I worked on was a expansion to the Facebook version of Triple Town called Capital City. Um, so it was only available on Facebook and then later on Steam. But it was basically an expansion to the base Triple Town game. Where you had like a kind of a permanent town that you could upgrade and customize and stuff. So did elements of the canceled game go into like later games um, as time went on? Or they were they just completely scrapped? They were completely scrapped, but um, the team we worked on with them uh, on it with uh, a company called uh, Sparky Pants. Um, we went on to make another game with them called Leap Day, and um, that one also eventually got canceled. But um, they're they're still a lovely company to work with, and, and we'd love to work with them again in the future. So yeah, the uh, the first game that I actually played by um, Spry Fox was uh, Triple Town. And uh, honestly, it's one of the most addictive games that I've played on my phone and on Steam as well. Um, what inspired Triple Town? Triple Town was designed by our, our chief creative officer, Daniel Cook. So he's one of the two founders of the company and sort of like the, the main designer. Um, as far as what inspired it, um, I can't really speak to his uh, inspiration because um, I'm not sure he's talked about it. but. Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, you know, I think the what he was trying to do with that game is just, um, you know, come up with like a really unique take on the the match three genre. Um, Daniel likes to do a thing where he takes an established genre of games um, and then kind of reinvents it from the ground up and, and kind of like shed some of the assumptions about it. Um, so... You know, with Match 3, you know, the, the popular format is kind of the bejeweled thing where you're swapping two tiles to create a, a match. And, um, you know, with Triple Town, they, you know, you're placing individual tiles. And instead of just matching stuff, um, you know, if you match three grass tiles in Triple Town, it, they merge into a, a new type of tile, like a bush tile. Um, and you kind of work your way up this, this hierarchy. Um, so that's something that I, that just came out of him kind of like going back to the uh, the core of what Match Three was about and, and kind of reinventing it from that point. As far as I know, I mean, I didn't I didn't I didn't design Triple Town, so I, I can't really speak with authority. What's the highest score that you've gotten on Triple Town? Um, you know, I am not super great at Triple Town. I mean, I've definitely got into the hundred thousands or maybe the millions, but um, I, you know, I can't hold a candle to some of the real, uh, like the top players. Um, there are people who can, um, it's funny at, at triple, triple town. It's almost like a, 
not quite a solved problem, but like when you get into the really high high skill levels, you can almost score arbitrarily high. Like there are, there's there's a, almost a stable strategy, um, and we've done some we've made some tweaks to the Ender game. Elder game to kind of alleviate that to a degree, but there are people who can like basically fill the board with um, uh, floating triple cast castles and just you know get like 30, 40, 50 million points. It's ridiculous. The latest game that you guys are working on is, uh, is Steambird's Alliance. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about what Steambird's Alliance is? Sure. So, um, Steambird's Alliance is a, a co-op shoot 'em up MMO. Um, so, you uh, you connect to a server. It's an online game, and there's other players in there, and you're flying planes around and and shooting like tons of tons of bullets. And um, it's co-op, so you can't shoot each other, but you can all team up against the uh, this kind of world of of enemies, and you. You're dodging bullets and upgrading your plane and, and healing each other and stuff like that. And so what's your favorite part of uh, Steambird's Alliance? So the uh, part of the kind of the, the origin of the game is um, there was a, a previous game that Sprite Fox worked on with another company called uh, Realm of the Mad God, um, which was also a MMO shoot em up, but it had kind of like retro pixel art graphics and a fantasy theme. So you're like, archers and warriors and wizards and stuff um and that game was pretty special it you know i mean it, it's still around you can still play it but we're no longer involved with it but um at the time when, when realm came out there wasn't really anything like it where you know tons of people could just jump in and, and the, the co-op was kind of seamless you know you just all got xp when you're kind of at the, on the same screen and all shooting at stuff so you would just you know it was always I don't know, it just worked out nicely. You, these mobs of people would form and you'd run around and, and shoot stuff together and it was a lot of fun and people got really into it and we had, had a really strong community. Um, and so part of what Steambridge Alliance is about for us as a company is, is kind of recapturing some of that magic uh, that we lost with Realm. Um, and so, you know, a lot of the same things, you know, the same mechanics are, are what we're trying to replicate with, with Steambirds where you know, you're flying with a bunch of friends and you're healing each other and upgrading each other. And, um, uh, you know, there's just feel like feeling of like group camaraderie as you're taking about down a big boss and stuff. So that's probably what I enjoy the most. And you guys, uh, I seeing it right now in your, uh, your Twitter updates. This was a couple hours ago, but I mean, you guys were streaming it on, uh, on Twitch. So how has the overall reaction to the game been so far? Yeah, it's been it's been pretty good. So um, we we're currently between um, our alpha periods. So we've had two um, alphas where we invited players in, um, like an invite only alpha, and play for a while. And we would um, you know stream play tests with them and, and collect data and, and listen to feedback and improve the game. And um, where we finished our second alpha period uh it's been a couple months now months ago now and um so we're just working on the game internally but um you know during those alpha periods we got lots of good feedback and 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 communities forming and um players coming up with all these cool strategies and, and giving us kind of detailed thoughts on the game so that's been really positive and then um you know the stream you're talking about that you saw on Twitch uh, is our weekly development stream where we have been showing uh, every week we kind of show what we what the team's been working on and sometimes the team will get in and just kind of play the game and and you know play it for real so to speak and, and see how far they can get and we're we're just chatting to things and um, you know the stream gets a pretty good you know reaction or you know some some chat and whatnot it's not a huge audience we um, for the for the development stream because we're still figuring out the details of what it what it what it means to kind of stream your development and, and create content that people want to watch on twitch because we're kind of new to that channel but um yeah it's been really fun and it kind of it's nice for us just as a team to um you know see the work we've put in every week kind of go live so to speak um 
and, and have people get eyes on it and give feedback. So that's been a overall a pretty good process. What's been the uh, the best like piece of criticism that you guys have gotten from doing stuff like that? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I can't think of anything, one specific piece of criticism, but in general, when, uh, especially when we're trying out new visual directions, um, like, you know, I remember a couple weeks ago, um, we have we have clouds in the game, you know, it's a, a 3D game, you're flying around as planes, and we had these nice, wispy, realistic looking clouds, and we tried doing a, uh, like a low poly, chunky looking cloud look, like totally different. Um, and we were just trying it out and seeing what people thought. We were kind of unsure ourselves, and people were just like, "Oh, those look weird. Those look like giant rocks." And it was just like an overall like not positive reaction. And we, so we were like, oh, "Okay, well, that's that was kind of unambiguous feedback, and uh, we're glad we tried it." But you know, we, we quickly reverted back to the older clouds because the older clouds were fine. Um, so. Yeah, I don't remember any like key insights, but little things like that, you know, just getting kind of an unvarnished opinion, fresh eyes. Because when you're when your head's down working on something and you've been, you know, noodling on those clouds or whatever for a few days, it's hard to look at it with fresh eyes the way a player would and, and kind of give a uh, unfiltered opinion. With uh, with Steambird's Alliance, um, are we going to be seeing a release similar to uh, it was Roads Not Taken that was on PS4, right? Uh, yeah, correct. Yes. Um, so are you guys looking at doing console and PC just like that? Or what are we seeing for Steambird's Alliance? If we can um, say. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so it's currently to be determined. Um, it's definitely going to be on uh, PC and Mac, like probably on Steam and, and, and whatnot. Um, and we're currently... Um, you know, just kind of exploring our options as far as other platforms and, and possible partners. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think I think it would be a great fit on consoles. Um, I, the uh, the way the game plays, you can you can hook up a gamepad um, to your PC or Mac and, and play with it. And the gamepad, I think, is a superior experience compared to using the keyboard and mouse. So, I think it would I think it would be very at home on consoles. We just haven't uh, nailed down any particular plans for that yet. So you're more of a, a console gamer than a PC gamer? Um, no, I wouldn't go that far. Um, I think <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have a PS4 now. Um, and so, you know, when I, when I make time to play games, which is not nearly as often as I used to, um, it'll be sometimes it's console just because it's easier to, to get going quickly. But my heart lies with uh, PC games. Pat, thank you so much for uh, for coming onto the show. And uh, if you guys want to check out their games, um, check out spryfox.com. Also, yeah. you, you can uh, find them on Steam and PS4 and on your phone as well. Um, I highly recommend playing Triple Town and Alpha Bear for sure because they are awesome games. And they're very – it's simple to learn but very hard to master. And if you get a crazy high score, please let me know. So, uh yeah, check us out on SoundCloud, face or not Facebook, uh, t- <laughs> Twitter, uh, Google Play, iTunes, Podcast Addict, and so much more. And uh, add Steambirds Alliance to your wish list on Steam to n- get notified when the game comes out. When does the game come out? Yeah, that's a good question. We're not sure yet. Hopefully, late this year. Definitely put it on your wish list. So, uh, thank you once again so much for for coming on to the show, Pat. And uh, thank you, everybody out there, for listening. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, goodbye.